Many of us follow SpaceX because of their legendary Starship rocket. When people doubted Musk, thinking they would never launch this rocket, we were rooting for SpaceX. And when they proved the doubters wrong and launched Starship for the first time, it felt like a personal victory for many of us. Now, as we wait for the next Starship launch, SpaceX has just revealed the launch date and got us all excited again. We will talk about this development in this video, but before we delve any deeper, please make sure to subscribe to our channel for future updates about Starship and SpaceX's other groundbreaking achievements. Like we already know, SpaceX has conducted three orbital test flights so far, two in 2023 and one in 2024. Now they are gearing up for the next one, and SpaceX seems quite ready. Musk even shared a video on Twitter of Starship fully stacked. If they get the launch license from the FAA, they might launch the rocket as early as the end of this month. However, there's something that's going to make this launch very different from the previous three launches. For the fourth launch, Musk says they aim to get through the high heating regime and then smash into the ocean at a controlled spot. SpaceX will launch the super heavy Starship into orbit and attempt to land on a virtual tower. This means Starship and Super Heavy will perform a controlled landing in the ocean, hovering over a specific point until it runs out of fuel and falls down. This method has many advantages for SpaceX. The clearest evidence is their practice of landing the Falcon 9 rocket on a drone ship. It took several attempts before they were confident enough to do it on a real drone. So how will Musk and SpaceX execute this landing in the fourth launch? Why don't they land Starship on a drone ship, but instead let it splash down in the water? Landing rockets is one of the most challenging aspects of rocket launches, and it's even more difficult when dealing with larger rockets like the Starship. The Falcon 9, for example, stands at 70 meters tall with a diameter of 3.7 meters and a mass of about 549 tons. It generates around 7.6 million newtons of thrust with its nine Merlin engines. Landing the Falcon 9 was no small feat and took several attempts before SpaceX could reliably land it on a drone ship. Each landing required precise control and timing to ensure the rocket touched down gently without toppling over or crashing. Falcon Heavy, which is an even more powerful rocket, combines three Falcon 9 boosters, making the landing process even more complex. The Falcon Heavy stands at 70 meters tall and has a diameter of 3.7 meters. But its first stage consists of three boosters, each needing to land safely either on drone ships or back at the launch site. The combined thrust of Falcon Heavy's 27 Merlin engines is 22.8 million newtons, and managing this immense power during landing was a significant engineering challenge. Each booster had to perform precise maneuvers to ensure a safe return. Now, consider the Starship. This rocket, including its super heavy booster, stands at 120 meters tall, has a diameter of nine meters, and a mass of about 5,000 tons. It generates a staggering 72 million newtons of thrust with its 33 Raptor engines, which is a colossal increase compared to the Falcon family rockets. The sheer size and power of Starship make landing exponentially more difficult. The Super Heavy booster alone is as tall as the entire Falcon Heavy rocket. The payload capacity of Starship also highlights its massive capabilities. While the Falcon 9 can carry up to 22,800 kilograms to low Earth orbit, Starship can carry up to 150,000 kilograms to low Earth orbit and more than 21,000 kilograms to geostationary transfer orbit. This far surpasses the capabilities of Falcon Heavy, which can carry up to 63,800 kilograms to low Earth orbit when fully expended. However, with this increased capability comes increased complexity in landing such a massive structure. SpaceX is not just going to drop the rocket into the ocean. They are going to perform many tests before landing the rocket. One of these tests is the belly flop maneuver, where the spacecraft flips over and re-enters the Earth's atmosphere with its belly facing down. This maneuver allows for a controlled descent and landing similar to a skydiver. To simulate this maneuver, SpaceX will drop the Starship into the sea. The orbital landing test flights did not start with straight up and down trajectories like the first prototype test flights. Even those trajectories were much more difficult than the engines flying sideways at full orbital speed. 
To be safe on re-entry, you need to re-enter the atmosphere somewhere on the other side of the ocean. If something goes wrong, it'll cause problems for the experimental spacecraft. SpaceX has carefully considered landing the Super Heavy booster in the Gulf of Mexico. The rocket's flight path over the ocean ensures all debris will fall into the water if something goes wrong. The final splash point is a safe distance in the Indian Ocean. This method is the best way to ensure human safety and increase Starship's success rate. The belly flop maneuver involves the spacecraft using its large surface area to create significant atmospheric drag, slowing down its descent without using much fuel. The Starship has a sprawling surface area of 545 square meters on its windward side, which acts as a brake during descent, reducing its terminal velocity significantly. During the belly flop maneuver, Starship's engines draw propellant from header tanks to avoid propellant settling on the belly side of the rocket due to atmospheric deceleration. This ensures the engines have a steady supply of fuel, even as the rocket falls belly first through the sky. Another reason SpaceX avoids catching Starship mid-air with Mechazilla is to protect the ground infrastructure. Starship is still experimental and needs more tests before attempting a mid-air capture. Any additional hardware around the launch pad could suffer significant damage if things go wrong. Some people might see the ground infrastructure as just a concrete slab, but it's much more than that. The launch infrastructure includes complex and expensive components such as the launch tower, fueling systems, and control centers. These facilities are vital for the safe and efficient operation of the rocket launches. We can see the significance of this from the first flight test when Musk said, anything that doesn't damage the launch tower is considered a success. This statement underscores the importance of the ground infrastructure in SpaceX's operations. The cost of the ground infrastructure can be immense. For example, building a launch pad can cost anywhere from $50 million to $200 million. The risk of an unsuccessful mid-air capture could lead to catastrophic failures, potentially causing the rocket to veer off course and destroy the launch tower or other critical systems. Given the size and power of the Starship, any mishap could result in extensive damage. The Super Heavy Booster which is part of the Starship system, alone stands at 70 meters tall and generates 72 million newtons of thrust. Now, you're all wondering when the fourth flight will happen. Well, it is scheduled for Saturday, June 1st, according to a new road closure that was just posted. This announcement has everyone buzzing with excitement, and we're here to give you all the details. SpaceX is always working on multiple missions simultaneously, ensuring that as one mission prepares for launch, the next is already in the pipeline. For instance, as SpaceX gears up for the fourth Starship test flight with Ship 29 and Booster 11, they are also laying the groundwork for the fifth flight, conducting tests and assembling prototypes to maintain a steady launch cadence. SpaceX is not only preparing for the upcoming fourth Starship test flight, but they are even working on prototypes for subsequent tests. For the fourth test flight, they are using Ship 29 stacked on Booster 11. For the fifth flight, SpaceX is preparing Ship 30 and Booster 12. Ship 30, equipped with six Raptor engines, is currently in Mega Bay 2, while Booster 12 is undergoing engine installation in Mega Bay 1. This pairing is expected to follow the fourth test closely. The sixth test flight is planned with Ship 31 and Booster 13. Ship 31, after its recent repairs and additional tests, will be ready to pair with Booster 13, which is fully stacked and awaiting its mission in the back of Mega Bay 1. However, Ship 31 recently underwent a critical cryogenic proof test, which is designed to verify the structural integrity of the prototype at extremely low temperatures. This test is crucial as it simulates the conditions the spacecraft will encounter in space. However, during this test, Ship 31 faced significant challenges. Although SpaceX did not publicly disclose the specific cause, many experts believe that it was an electrical issue. The incident was significant enough to prompt immediate repairs and additional safety checks. The ship was rolled back to the high bay the very next day for these repairs. Once the repairs and additional tests are completed, Ship 31 will be paired with Booster 13. 
Now, it might seem like SpaceX is always facing a problem with their Starship rockets, whether during flight tests or ground tests, but you have to realize that this rocket is the first of its kind, and SpaceX is discovering the engineering challenges of such a massive rocket by testing and fixing their mistakes. While they are not inventing the concept of a rocket, Starship is unlike any other rocket ever built. Developing smaller rockets like the Falcon 9, or even the larger Falcon Heavy, didn't take SpaceX as long or nearly as many tests. Falcon 9 went through rigorous testing, but its development timeline was much shorter compared to Starship. Falcon Heavy, which is essentially three Falcon 9 cores strapped together, also achieved success relatively quickly, performing its maiden flight in 2018. What sets Starship apart is its design as a fully reusable, super heavy lift launch vehicle with capabilities that far surpass those of any previous rockets. With a height of 120 meters and a diameter of 9 meters, Starship dwarfs other notable rockets such as NASA's Saturn V and the Space Launch System. Saturn V, which carried astronauts to the moon during the Apollo missions, stands at 110 meters tall and had a payload capacity of 140 metric tons to low Earth orbit. The Space Launch System, or SLS, is slightly shorter at around 98 meters in its Block 1 configuration and can carry 95 metric tons to low Earth orbit. In contrast, Starship is designed to carry up to 150 metric tons to low Earth orbit in its reusable configuration and up to 250 metric tons in an expendable version. This capacity is a game-changer for space exploration. As we all know, SpaceX has already conducted three Starship launches so far, each one showing improvements over the previous. Now they are gearing up for the fourth flight, which might be just around the corner. Like I said, the upcoming fourth test flight will involve Ship 29 and Booster 11. Both components are currently undergoing final preparations at SpaceX's Starbase facility in South Texas. The Super Heavy booster for this mission recently completed a successful static fire test on April 5, 2024. During this test, all 33 Raptor engines were ignited while the booster remained anchored to the ground. Ship 29 has also been busy. It underwent its own series of tests, including a static fire test on March 25, 2024, where all six of its Raptor engines were fired. Following this, a single-engine test was conducted from the ship's header tanks to simulate engine firings in space. The timeline for the fourth flight is ambitious, with SpaceX aiming for a launch as early as the end of this month. However, a few problems remain, including the need for a launch license modification from the Federal Aviation Administration. This is necessary due to the ongoing investigation into the March 14th flight, which saw the third Starship mission successfully reaching orbital velocity before experiencing an explosion during re-entry. It's important to note that this flight has achieved new milestones, notably managing to fly for nearly 50 minutes and perform complex maneuvers that previous flights did not accomplish. What sets this flight apart is that Musk revealed they will attempt to land the Super Heavy booster using a virtual tower concept in the ocean. This innovative approach is designed to simulate the Mechazilla Tower, which SpaceX plans to use for future landings. In this upcoming flight, the Super Heavy booster will aim to land at a specific point in the ocean where it will simulate docking with a virtual tower. This means the booster will try to land as if there is a tower in the ocean with arms that can catch it. These outstretched arms, which are part of the virtual tower, are designed to grab the booster between them, similar to how a real tower would. It will be amazing to witness this system work for the first time, as there has never been anything like it used in rocket history. This concept is Musk's unique idea, known as the Mechazilla system. The Mechazilla system involves a launch tower equipped with large robotic arms designed to catch the Super Heavy booster as it returns from space. Musk got the idea from a combination of existing technologies and his vision for fully reusable rockets. Traditional rocket landings involve the booster landing on a drone ship or a landing pad, but these methods still require a significant amount of fuel for the landing burn. By using a tower to catch the booster, SpaceX can save on fuel and simplify the recovery process. The concept of Mechazilla involves the booster descending towards the launch tower, where the robotic arms would move into position to catch it. 
This requires precise control of the booster's descent and the ability of the arms to secure the booster safely. The system aims to grab the booster by its grid fins, which are the aerodynamic surfaces used for steering during descent. Once caught, the booster can be quickly prepared for another launch, significantly reducing the turnaround time between missions. By developing a system that can catch and reuse boosters rapidly, SpaceX hopes to reduce the cost of access to space. And that's all for today's update. If you enjoyed watching and found it useful, please make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the like button. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.